Okay, we are back. Hi, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, man, machine, everything in between. We're back with more The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Where we last left off, we were heading into, um, what is it? Is it, how, how do they, how do they section them off? Part three, investigation three, something three, trial three? Turnabout 3? Whatever. We were heading into part 3 of the, um, of the first case. Right? First trial. We found out, we did a lot, actually. We did a lot, uh, last stream. <clears throat> we got introduced to our characters, right? Um, we are on a case right now where the English professor who came from abroad, from Great Britain, to uh, Japan to teach in Yume Academy or whatever. He was killed. Possibility of being poisoned. Poison is not on any records in Japan, so it might be an imported poison. Right? We're gonna find that out today. Also, I'm gonna do myself a favor and check the audio levels and just put them down lower because I thought they were low enough already. But looking back on the last stream, they were a little bit louder than I would like. So I'm going to put them around there. There we go. I'll be checking that periodically throughout the stream to see what happens with that. But I don't think the audio was too bad. It just was a little louder than I would like myself. Also, no air conditioner in the background this time. But if this room does get too fucking hot, I will turn that shit on. So, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Alright, so let's continue. Let's get on with it. Episode 1, The Adventure of the Great Departure Trial, Part 3. There we go. The Adventure of the Great Departure. That's a title. <laughs> Alright, 22nd November, 1.14 p.m. Supreme Court of Judicature courtroom number two. I'm probably still butchering that word. I don't give a fuck. So we have, uh, what's her name? Susato? Susato Mikotaba? She's here. She's helping us out. She has a package to show the judge, to show the courtroom. Well, I understand you and the judicial... Uh, fuck, I'm already flubbing my words. I understand you and the judicial assistant to the defense, but... Why this sudden ingress into my courtroom? Huh. A judicial assistant. And a woman, no less. Oh, yeah. We're back in those good old times. The rules state that females are not permitted into a court of law other than to testify. That's the rules. And then she goes, well, joke's on you, because I'm actually a dude. Yes, I fully understand. I ask only for five minutes of time. I have some vital evidence that I must hand over to the defense. Huh. You're too late, little girl. This trial has already been concluded. Five minutes. I will not allow a moment... Not allow a moment... Blah, 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 blah. I will not allow a moment more. But, Your Excellency... I am most grateful. Man, they were quick to, they were quick to go back in the kitchen with you. <laughs> um, who exactly are you? I'm sorry, there's no time. Please, simply accept this for now. What is it? A report about something? Written in English? I can't read this shit. I'm Japanese. It's Giselle Brett's research. Oh no, she didn't create her own poison, did she? That's even worse. The English woman's? After the trial resumed earlier, I hurried back to the university. I went to Dr. Wilson's laboratory in the medical facility and borrowed this paper. Oh yes, that is a paper indeed, not a whole entire book. <laughs> oh yes, that's right. Miss Bright was studying under the professor, wasn't she? So, does this research, whatever it is, have something to do with the case? I'm afraid I don't know. I can't read English. I haven't been able to listen to the proceedings of the trial myself. Oh no. Of 
course not. Special charis characteristics of Curare... Curare? What? Curare and its effect on human subjects. Interesting. Curare? What the hell is that? I never heard that word before. Me neither. Time's up. The, pro uh, the prosecution demands the immediate removal of this female trespasser from the courtroom. Alright, well, go fuck yourself. I... <laughs> the prosecution... <laughs> The prosecution, damn it, my mind just went into jokes straight away. The prosecution requests that this woman head back into the kitchen and make us all sandwiches. There was too little time for me to read in, to read it in detail, but I have summarized what I could on note uh, on a note just inside the cover. If you think it could be valuable, please cast your eye over it. This is wonderful. Thank you. Giselle reports have been entered into the court record. A report detailing an unknown poison that Miss Brett has been researching during her time at Yume University. Aha. Goodbye then, and good luck. Thanks, Susato. You're great. You have had long enough, Council. We cannot detain our English guest any longer. You guys been saying that for like the the whole entire the entirety like the last half of the last stream the entire time we can't have her stay here longer uh but your honor we shall and we will <laughs> i ask the prosecution and the defense now one last time to get down with your bad selves does either side have any further evidence to present to the court i presume not but okay all right so judge how come you didn't do this last time when you were getting ready to clear your verdict? You didn't even ask me if I had anything left. You just said, yep, prosecution said we gotta do it. Let's do it. The prosecution has made its case conv convincing, oh God, convincingly enough already. Nothing more to add, Your Excellency. Ryanosuke, we're out of options here. This really is our very last chance. Yeah, I know. Your Excellency, I, wanna, I also want to point out, throughout the whole entire time, Ryanosuke would slam his hand down and it would go with a, like a flat little, a flat little smack sound, little, you know, right? And he would like look at his hand, he's like, what? I'm not intimidating at all. But now, full force, hands on the table, fucking crashing down. Your Excellency, the defense has new evidence. Oh yeah? Hmm, that look. The unyielding stare of a true Japanese warrior. Well, Miss Brett? Yes, Your Excellency. If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you could grace us with your presence a little longer. It's a delightful in invitation, but I'm afraid... It's not so very long until tea time. Forgive me, Miss Brett. It seems I wasn't clear. Sit your ass down now. <laughs> Sit your ass down right now. I realize it was phrased as a question. However, I must ask you to treat that as an order. I've said it many times before, but the Japanese language makes no sense. My apologies, dear lady. So, counsel, what is the new evidence that deems the court's attention? Deems? Did I just say deems? Demands the court. What is... I gotta get a test. I gotta get a test for, like, fucking, for dyslexia or some shit. I, I most likely don't have it because I can see the word says demands, but my mind just goes, nah, just fill, the, fill in that blank, dude. You can do it. <laughs> Everyone knows what you're talking about. Yes. Miss Giselle Brett, we understand you were studying under Dr. Wilson at Yume University, doing research. Research, by sheer coincidence, perhaps into a deadly poison. What? Poison? Where are you going with this, Council? 
a toxin known as curare. 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 Uh, <laughs> curare. I don't fucking know. Your Excellency. Even the slightest amount of this deadly poison entering the body leads to instant death. Objection! I have a feeling that it's supposed to just be pronounced as cure. You know? I gave him the cure. <laughs> that's probably... I'm just gonna call it cure. Let's call it cure. I feel like that's what it's supposed to be pronounced as. What a complete and other nonsense. Cure, you say? I never heard of it. You wouldn't have. What do you mean? I mean that you wouldn't have heard of cure before... Before... Wait, what? Before for one... Okay. <laughs> that confused me because the words. Before for one very simple reason. There should be a comma there. I think there should be a comma there. It doesn't exist in our country. It doesn't exist. Correct. Which means... No matter what test the police can do for toxins, they never identify cure. Why? Because there is no test available here that can identify the presence of this highly deadly poison. What? Masaka. Oh no. Order. Council, did this deadly poison truly exist? According to this report authorized by visiting research students from England, Cure has long been used by the tri tribes people of South America as a poison to lace their arrows. It seems that it's reasonable that it's reasonable well wait what? Reasonably reasonable. What the hell am I saying? It seems that it's reasonably well known amongst European doctors and scientists. To lace their arrows. The report states that Poor states that it is pr uh, produced from the extract. Oh, God damn it! I'm taking sip of my water. Rewire my brain. You know, some days I can read, other days I can't. The report states that it is produced from the extract of a tree that grows deep in the Amazonian jungle. And it was first brought back to Europe at the turn of the century by explorers. It claims that animals shot by arrows laced with cure suffer instant death. Doesn't that about sums it up, Miss Brett? Attention! <laughs> Tru Trump Trumpery? Trumpery. That's a word? <laughs> These aspirations are other Trumpery. They're all wearing fucking fake ass two pieces, and their skin's very orange. To start with, if the victim had been administered some of this so-called deadly poison, he would have seen squirming and writhing in pain, and the other diners would have surely noticed. Did you not realize when we said instantly, you fucking moron? That's true. What do you say to that, Inspector? I say go, go, gadget bullshit. Obviously, I would have noticed a disturbance like that. I don't remember anything like that either. I didn't notice the professor being in any kind of pain. Maybe because... Anesthetics... <sighs> According to this, however, it's the other way around. What do you mean, the other way around? The very fact that the victim did not show any visible signs of distress is evidence that cure was used. Explain yourself, counsel. The moment this toxin enters a person's system, it causes instant paralysis. In other words, a f uh, that ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> in other words, afflicted victims lose all strength and are completely unable to move. Even if they were in total, a even if they were in total agony, there would be no visible signs of pain at all. How terrible! Oh no! So that means. He fell down, hand hit the, hand hit the, uh, the burning plate. It's just like, uh, <laughs> nothing but pure pain. 
Obviously, if a man loses all strength in his muscles, he collapses on the floor. But with the chair under him for support, as Dr. Wilson did, the effects could be largely unnoticed. But I don't follow, Cosmo. That's just paralysis. I thought the poison caused instant death. The full explanation is extremely unpleasant. The poison causes immediate paralysis, as I said, leaving the victim unable to move. But after a short time, the paralysis is so severe, it causes the muscles that control- oh god. That control respirations to fa <laughs> respirations. Mm. Respiration to fail. Ugh. I'm gonna- after this stream, I'm gonna shoot myself. That's what I'm gonna do. Maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll become a genius afterwards. Respiration. In other words, the exact cause of death is suffocation. And all the while the victim is conscious and aware, just unable to move. That's hideous. To the observer, it would look almost like the victim was slipping peacefully into an endless sleep. But for the victim himself, his final moments would be a living hell. That is the true nature of this deadly cure poison. Oh shit, and he was being burned on top of it? Ugh. You put that man through torture? You're suggesting that this bottle, Council, actually contains this terrifying poison? This... this is all very convenient, isn't it? A he... what? A heathro? He... he heatherto? What? He heatherto? What the fuck? An unknown poison for which there was no means of testing. What a happy tale for the defense. Ahem, if I may. All these facts... You think you're so clever? Oh, shit. It is you who must be taught. Of course. Dear lady. So, this is how you Japanese behave, is it? What? You steal another honest hard you steal another's honest hard work and then announce the results as if you discovered them. I'm appalled. What a loathsome act. Well, Miss Brett, the feeling is mutual. Whatever do you mean? <laughs> Capitalizing on the unfortunate circumstances of an innocent man to frame him for a heinous crime. That really is a loathsome act. Wouldn't you agree? Attention! Oh my, wouldn't you agree? Enough of this. I, for one, refuse to accept it. No one cares what you think anymore, Ouchie. The idea of some poison that doesn't even exist in the great empire of Japan, it's... It's breaking the rules. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, excuse me, Your Excellency. Yes, Miss Brett? May I borrow that bottle for a moment, please? Is she gonna drink it? She's just gonna go, gulp, gulp, pinkies up. <laughs> uh, well, yes, I don't see why not. Yep. Don't get too big for your boots, you insignificant little island boys. Sorry? To an English woman such as myself, this whole affair is fra 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 what? Farcical. Farcical. That's the word. Farcical com comedy. Your little police games and these foolish courtroom antics. It's laughable, really. But I'm getting bored of it all now. It's time for the games to end. Cheers. Damn, baby, you can throw it back! <laughs> what? what are you doing? 
delicious. Huh? No sparkle left at all. How appropriate for this shabby affair. Can we look at those poison notes? Can I... Can I just... A little... Can I... Maybe just... Just... Just a little... Just a little bit. A poison made from the bark of certain trees in the jungles of South America. The hunters of the region have used it since ancient times to incapitate their prey. Incapitate. Yeah. Inca incapacitate. Incapitabaloop. Effects. Instant paralysis of the entire body and subsequent death, even in minutes dosed. Root of entry. The above mentioned effects occur when the poison enters the body through a wound, such as the inflict such as inflicted by a blowpipe dart. Okay. So that happens when it enters through a wound. Not ingestion. Well, Technically, it is still ingestion. You know what I mean. Due to the ability to render the human body um, paralytic. Paralytic, really? That's a word? <laughs> it's believed that the toxin could have applications as an anesthetic. Okay. However, a solution for the respiratory arrest cause as a result for full body paralysis must be found first, or patients would die of suffocation. Huh. Okay. So. Hmm. So somehow, his medicine was laced with this stuff. Or, you know, at his doctor's appointment, this is what he took. A solution for the respiratory arrest caused as a result for full body paralysis must be found first. Or a patient would die of suffocation. Hmm. Okay. Now the question is just how the fuck did it get there? Jesus. Jesus, lady. You're pulling some big moves here. Goodness. Oh, goodness gracious me. Whatever is the matter, you all look quite stunned. So, no cure. The bottle is clean. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> You look quite incredulous. Incredulous? Yeah. Little boy. But of course, that's the simple truth. Thank you for presenting the findings of my research so concisely here in this grand venue. Most kind. This lady has our fucking number. Jesus. Thank you, waiter. Now then, Your Excellency. Uh, um, yes, Miss Brett. I should like to be excused now, please. I think I've given more than enough of my time for the further for the furtherance of friendship between our countries. Ah, oh, yes, dear lady. We are most great. We are most God. Most gratif. Great fuck. Fuck. I can't even speak. God. We are most gratified with all the assistance you have given. No fucking way. This doesn't make any sense. Has to have been poisoned in the bottle. So how... How did she... How did she swallow a whole glass and live to tell the tale? <laughs> how did she swallow? <laughs> I don't understand it. Well, I suppose if nothing else, this little far eastern charade... will make for an interesting conversation at the next party I attend in London when I kill my next victim. There. There's gotta be poison in the bottle. Doesn't there? But there can't even... But there... Uh, but there can have been. Because otherwise she would have kneeled over dead. 
Makes no sense. Oh my god, they gave me one... Wait. Oh wait, no, that's the... Mm. <sighs> Shit. Damn it. She's got my number. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Alright. Shit. Alright, damn it. I'm gonna go with my gut on this one. Doesn't contain poison. As I thought, there is no poison in that bottle. What? Why? Ryunosuke? Isn't it obvious? If there was poison in there, she'd be dead by now. Sometimes, your unadulterated naivety really astounds me. But sometimes, it's in need for a good staining, until it's as dark as your uniform in, in the ways of the world. How is that what this color is supposed to represent? That was a guileless ending to promising lines of inquiry, Council, for which you will be penalized. Ah, shit. This whole trial is poisoned. All right, and I'm satisfied. No reasonable doubt remains as matter. The defense has consistently failed to refute adequately the assertions of the prosecution. Accordingly, I hereby announce the court's final verdict. I find the defendant Ryunosuke Naruhodo fucking guilty. Okay. Officer, restrain the accused and send the telegraphic communication to Great Britain without delay. The accused will not be granted the right to appeal. That is all. Court adjourned. I actually want to see the, uh, whatchamacallit, checkpoint system. Retry from this scene. Oh! Resume save game. And, okay. Alright. So they did learn. They did learn from the other games. All right, now is it retry as in like, here's the rest of your health back or is it here's where you were? <laughs> oh no, they gave me the rest of my health back. Okay, so there's no, all right. Okay, now I went my gut on that one and it was wrong. And the reason I went there is because I was following the line of maybe he was poisoned at his, uh, at his doctor's appointment or whatever, but then how would the poison get there? Now, the other theory I had, which is why I wanted to check the, uh, the notes on the poison initially, was does the poison act, does, does the uh, substance by itself, you know, act on its own or does it need to be carbonized first, right? So, I don't know, right? Because she said it herself. She's like, oh, it lost all its sparkle. Oh, well. Right? Or maybe just being, a f uh, just being, what's what I'm looking for? Exposed to the elements outside of, like, being extracted and put into a container and sealed. You know? Maybe the elements diluted it somehow. The culprit did put oh fuck. The culprit did put cure poison into Dr. Wilson's carbonated water. I I the defense refused to change its position. You're serious? Attention! Fool, are you blind? There's no possible way that the bottle could contain poison. I mean we just saw Miss Brett drinking the water from it. That's right. Which rather complicates your argument, I think. And I believe the, I believe that compl, gob, blah, 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 blah. I believe that complication can be explained. How exactly? I mean, to be fair, Mr. Man over there also did tamper with the crime scene a little bit here and there. He could have just gotten rid of the poison. I need to think through. I need to think through all the things that doesn't quite add up here. One by one. I'm sure the answer is in the evidence we have in the court record. 
My phone just got a fucking notification. What the hell? Okay. <laughs> uh, somewhere in the court record. It has to be. Very well. If the defense truly... Ex uh, if he truly intends to assert this claim, then I must ask you to support the assertion with evidence. What explains how the witness was able to consume the supposed poisoned water unscathed? Okay, carbonated water the victim and spread shared on the day of murder that was on the victim's table. What explains how the witness was able to consume this poison unscathed? Just want to read it. Clear record of some kind of medical treatment. Certain of the day professor was killed. Extraction with the use of anesthesia. Extraction. Tooth. Okay. Laughing gas. He couldn't feel it in the west. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. No food or water. No food or drink. Other than water for three hours. Post. Oh, shit. Sorry, I I, I kind of went kind of went quiet there because I'm starting to think I'm like, no food or drink. Okay, other than water for three hours. So we're getting back onto my earlier, my earlier assumption, which is like they had carbonated water. He wasn't supposed to have carbonated water. He's supposed to have regular water, probably to dilute the effects of the poison. But carbonation probably aggravated it. Um, let's see. And she herself said that she ordered, you know, she ordered food. So that probably diluted the effects of that poison too. Because, you know, it wasn't put within a wound. It wasn't put within a wound. Oh, the gunshot. But no, he would have to be... No, he was dead before the gunshot, so that wouldn't even matter. So it's either medical records or this, right? Let's just uh, present this. Yes. The answer to this riddle is right there in Miss Brett's own research report. Attention. It's not a valid explanation. No. After all, we don't speak English. The report's utter gibberish. What do you mean, we don't speak English? We have a fucking interpreter right there on the stand. This imprudent young scoundrel is trying to ri ridicule the court, Your Excellency. I'm losing my ability to read. I'm not trying to ridicule anyone. Honest. I'm just reading Susano Sun's notes. I concur. This report is to extent. Uh, extensive to be considered in its entirety by the court. You will direct us to the to the per oh God. Just show us where it says it. That's what he's saying. Fuck. Let's see special characteristics, practical applications. It's written here under practical applications. I think. Oh really? Go on. Well, think about it. You want to know how the poison can be drunk without it taking effect. That's a practical application of uh, the poison's use as a drink, maybe. Oh, I thought... My bad. <laughs> I completely got that wrong. I thought they meant point to where, where it says, you know, and I thought... I thought they were talking about the paragraph where it's like it can be used for an anesthetic. My bad. Attention! You have to do better than that. Of course I do. I started to think how well fair... How what? How well fair in the 20th century if we're led by the likes of you. Yes, yes, I get it. Ryunosuke. Hmm? What? Read properly. Go fuck yourself. Some t <laughs> something that explains how the English woman could have taken, taken it with no effects. You don't have any more clue that the English tome than I do. It's completely interactable. 
Oh, hey, Sophie. Sophia, it's been a while. All right. So I chose the wrong one. My bad. So now it's a special characteristics. I'm going to go with special characteristics. That's the one I probably meant to choose. We've been hearing a lot about this cure poison. And it's left me curious about something. By the way, what day is it? Oh, it's New Year's Eve. <laughs> Happy New Year's Eve. Shit. Oh, Council. Well, it sounds as though in indigenous hunters have been using this poison for years and years. To lace the head of arrows that they shot at whatever prey they're hunting. So, we've been led to believe, yes. What's this game? This is, a uh, Phoenix Wright. Phoenix, my bad, not Phoenix Wright. Hold up, let me restart that. <laughs> this is the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. It is a HD collection of the Great Ace Attorney games that were only released in Japan. There's two of them in, this, in uh, the Great Ace Attorney like mini series, spin-off series. And basically it's just Phoenix Wright's um ancestors during a time where uh Japan was first starting to incorporate the whole judicial system. Well, their version of the ju uh, judicial system anyways in this make-believe world of Ace Attorney. But it's a prequel. It's a super prequel to Phoenix Wright basically. <laughs> we're playing as his ancestor. So we're just we're just a lawyer. That's what we're doing. Solving some mysteries. We're a lawyer, slash detective, slash lawyer, slash attorney. <laughs> Alright. And the point of hunting is to catch prey to eat. Get to the point, please. But, if they were to use these laced arrows, doesn't that mean there would be traces of poison left in the prey the hunters were going to eat? Ah, good point. So surely the hunters wouldn't want to eat their prey, would they? Because, then they'd be eating poison. Oh, I know a lot about this game? Not really. This is my first time playing this. It's just that I know... There... I know, I guess I would say I know more than the average person when it comes to, like, game development and stuff like that. I'm not an expert in any type of way. But I just know that for a long time, the, uh... Like, even before I started playing Phoenix, right? I knew for a long time that... Phoenix Wright came out, and they put some of the games out in the West over here, but for a long time, getting these games localized just hasn't been going well, so finally, finally, um, you know, we're able to get these games localized. Because <laughs> before, before a Phoenix Wright game would come out and people would just be like, oh, thank God, thank God that I don't have to learn Japanese. <laughs> Alright? I don't know. But, it's nice. <laughs> it's nice. I'm liking it. I'm enjoying it. We're still on the first trial, which we're like, what, six hours, five hours into now? Oh, God. Good gracious, Council. No, that would be madness. But I actually found the answer to the conundrum in this research paper here. Under special characteristic, it says this. The poison starts to work after entering the body through a wound. Through a wound, you say? I see. That makes sense. Yes. The mention of that pe peculiar detail seems a little strange to me, though. But it all makes sense when you, when you interpret what's written like this. When cure enters the body through an open wound, it has terrifying poisonous effects. However, when it enters the body via the mouth, it has no poisonous effects whatsoever. So there is significance in the gunshot. Okay, so instead of just shooting him and making it seem like, you know, he got shot, she had to shoot him to actually use the poison. So she mean so she shot him and shoved the bottle in his bullet <laughs> his bullet wound and just said, "Here you go. Drink up." What? Miss Brett. You authorized this research. You knew cure special characteristics. And you knew 
that you can make a spectacle of drinking that water without any danger to yourself. You meddling little. That thing's alive? Rapscallion. Well, Ryanosuke, it turns out... You're even better lawyer than I thought you'd be. Really? Me? A lawyer. Objection! All this poison talk is fascinating, I'm sure. But I failed to see how it possibly... So, the ill-bred little puppy has a new toy to play with. Some facts he read in a book. But I'm afraid knowledge doesn't suit you, little boy. It only makes you look silly. What are you trying to say? Your schoolboyish logic has a fatal flaw. Schoolboyish? Flaw. As even your brain has managed to deduce, cure is safe to ingest. It seems likely that its effects are near fuck. Naturalized ner ner fuck. Neutralized. I can't read. Neutralized by the acidic nature of the gastric su succus? Sucus? What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Oh yes, well, of course. Gastric suckers. What are they? <laughs> so, if this lethal poison is completely harmless when drunk... Wait, is it like Danganronpa? Yes. Where it is visual novel with trials, but instead of us doing a death game with a bunch of fucking crazy ass anime teens hyped up on hormones, <laughs> we are, you know, this one takes more of a not serious nature kind of, okay. It, it has, you know, it deal, it deals with like, you know, murder cases and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, some of the characters are wacky, but at the end of the day, you know, they're like, they talk about the consequences and stuff like that, right? Unlike Danganronpa, where they, they have the trial, they vote, they kill, and then everyone goes, so let's fuck around for two hours now, right? You know, <laughs> this one has like a, you know, actual plot line, at least from what I'm, at least from what I played of the first three games. It had, like, you know, an actual plot to follow, like, a fucking, you know. So does Dangarapa, but you know what I mean. It's a little more serious. That's what I'm getting at. The professor wouldn't have died when he swallowed it, would he? That's right. Good gracious. That basic science. Science that even a schoolboy should be able to understand, now. Order. Order in the court. The logic holds. If the lady and the prose uh, prosecutor... <laughs> if the lady and the professor drink the same poison, they would be affected in the same way. Are you trying to suggest? Yes. This cure poison is completely irrelevant to the case on trial. That's right. Surely even a little cockroach like you could understand something as simple as that. What, what's going on here? Yeah, that's what I'm trying- That's what I'm thinking, Ryanosuke. What is this? Welling up inside me. I've never felt like this before. It's a sort of conviction to break down all the discrepancies. It's so intense. Almost rage-like. And more than anything else, it's an animalistic desire to take down my prey. Calm down there, Lego she, alright? Fucking what? <laughs> oh, the point. I don't think so, Mr. Zelbret. How? How dare you use that tone with me? You know very well that there is no fatal flaw here. You know exactly why. Even though both you and the victim swallowed the same poison, you are alive. But Dr. Wilson is dead. Hey Breezy, how's it going? Counsel, I'm sure I don't need to remind you, you must provide compelling evidence. 
as we now know that this poison is completely harmless when ingested. Why would Dr. Wilson alone have been killed by the cure? May I remind you of the gun wound? Also the fact that she had food and he didn't, but also may I remind you of the wound? Damn it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Listen, Ryunosuke. There's no need to overthink this. You know what? You're right. I end up doing that a lot when it comes to Ace Attorney. Because you look at my other playthroughs, it's like you have the answer, but you didn't answer it the way that Ace Attorney wanted you to answer it. Uh, might go ice skating with your friends tomorrow. Oh, that's great. I haven't... I've never been ice skating, but I have been uh, rollerblading and stuff like that, but that was a long time ago. Rollerblades are cool. I like them. I mean, ice skates are cool too. You can like, you can do cool roundhouse kick and cut someone's throat with it. <laughs> uh, I'm crazy. We know the cure toxin effects only come into play when the poison enters the body via a wound. Yes. Right? So that can only mean that Dr. Wilson drank his glass of water. He must have had a wound somewhere that- <gasps> Motherfucker! Oh, I was so right, but I chose the wrong one! I totally forgot! Oh, shit! I was stuck on the bullet hole! Not the tooth that was extracted from him. He had an open wound because he had a tooth pulled out. I was on the right path, but I chose the wrong one. As Miss Brett so readily pointed out, she drank the same water as the professor. However, there was a fundamental and fatal difference between the two diners. A fatal difference. The toxin effects, toxin, the toxic effects of cure are only felt when the poison enters the body through an open wound. So for a healthy person with no injuries, drinking it is completely harmless. But, what if there was a wound inside the mouth of the person drinking the poisoned water? Inside? Yes, like the wound you might have if you had just been to the dentist and had a tooth extracted, for example. Oh yeah, turn it on its head, baby. Miss Brett, you've acknowledged many times in your testimony early that you were well aware of Dr. Wilson's dental appointment that day. See? Oh. Ice skating was hell on your ankles when you first tried it? Really? Oh shit. You didn't roll your ankle, did you? Oh man. That'd be the worst. <laughs> so this- so that is. Oh, wait, my bad. I'm reading that completely wrong. So that's it. You used the knowledge to orchestrate this. Oh yes, I did. <laughs> Is she laughing? I don't like to repeat myself, but honestly, I can't resist. These childish courtroom games and your half-baked arguments are all so pure pure God damn it. I can't read, I'm sorry guys, I don't know what that word is. I'm not even gonna try. I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna end the stream right now. Bye. All right, let's not do that. <laughs> what? What do you mean? Don't worry, little schoolboy. You'll find out soon enough. What? What is she doing? You see, when you leave vital evidence lying around, you never know what might happen to it. No. I mean... It could just slip. You, you, you can't do that. That's it's not fair. <laughs> I don't think I did. Might have been, might have been the shoes. Oh, oh, did you? Uh, you didn't have your. Well, it was your first time. I wouldn't expect you to have your own ice skates. You probably rented some. Yeah, those shoes are fucking terrible. <laughs>
<laughs> if uh if you're gonna like if you're ever gonna do it like again, uh, even though even though they're on the expensive side, it's better to invest in your own equipment because the rental shit is just so poor and bad and not properly taken care of. Oh dear, how careless of me. I'm afraid some crucial evidence may have just been tragically destroyed. So, if this took place in the modern era of Phoenix Wright, right, this wouldn't matter because it would have been televised and people would have saw it. But the fact is that, let, let me put up the setting to remind you guys. We're in like the great, you know, fucking centuries apart from Phoenix Wright, right? Fucking England and Japan just signed a treaty. And things are politically hot right now. And right now, we have the death of an Englishman who came over to Japan. Who was murdered, you know, by an English woman. And, you know, photographs and stuff is all new to us. So, in this whole entire room, the only person of any influence to Britain is that lady. So, how's it going to look... When a bunch of Japanese men go, yeah, it was the British woman who did it. And Japan goes, where's the evidence? And they go, we don't got it. We're fucked. So she totally just admitted it. But we can't do nothing about it. She just smashed that bottle. Officer, what are you waiting for? Collect up as much of the water from the broken bottle as possible at once. You're wasting your time. This delightful carpet under my feet here was a gift from the British Empire. I assure you, it will soak up the water beautifully. You have neither the technology nor the, pre <laughs> nor the presence of mind to recover it. She just straight up admitted to murder. Just straight up and said, Ah, oh, but you can't prove it though. How could you? You... You won't get away with this. You can thump... You can thump the bench and sh shout as much as you like, little boy. But I'm afraid we'll never know. Now will we? If there really was poison in the bottle, or not. You... And let us not forget. We still have some very compelling evidence left intact. Isn't that right? counsel for the prosecution. Oh, of course, of course. You're referring to this photographic print, I presume, dear lady. That's right. And really, look at this photograph. Look at this photograph! It's as clear as day, isn't it? The poor professor was sitting with his back to me. So of course the only person who could have shot him from the front is the little schoolboy. Objection! No. You killed the victim that day. Using cure. And then, in order to frame Ryanosuke Narahodo for the crime. You waited until he picked up the pistol you arranged for him to find on the floor. Before you shot the professor dead body in the chest with your own hidden gun. Then, in the confusion that followed, you had to do what turned the dead professor wait what what i'm sorry i had a moment my brain just fried then in the confusion that followed all you had to do was turn the dead professor and his chair around you see you had every opportunity to commit this crime <laughs> what a wonderful imagination you have young man why do you keep calling him young man you all go to the same university is she is she in the court records i need to get to the bottom of this how old are you? 24? Young man, he's one year younger than you. What the fuck? A hidden gym, you say? And I shot the professor's dead body, did I? Well, I'm terribly sorry, but you don't have a shred of evidence. I don't think, I don't think the Ace Attorney series knows how age works. Because they we're talking about the same series that's like, here's fucking Fr uh, Francesca Von Karma. She's the same age as Maya. But she's a grown-ass woman. <laughs> it's like, what? 
<laughs> it's so not fair. Exactly. And as you have nothing to support your wild claims, the prosecution's stance remains unchanged. The victim, Dr. John H. Wilson, was killed by a gunshot to the chest. Delivered in cold blood by the accused, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Naruhodo. This is unbelievable. How can this be happening? What is that true? Oh, dude, that is so fucking. I was confused for the longest time. Because I would constantly be like. I'll be like, damn, Francesca's a grown ass woman. And then Maya goes, at some point, Maya goes, man, and we're the same age. It's not even fair. And I go, wait, what? And then I pull up the fucking facts. Like, it's. It's a, I don't know which fucking playthrough it was, but it's one of the playthroughs. But I pull up the facts and I go, what? They're the same age? Th no! <laughs> that can't be! Right? We had her, but now, is she really going to get away with it? Oh, by the way, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if, I don't know how Twitch works. It might have notified you guys or something like that. But, um, yeah, follower emotes are now available to me. They're still in beta, which I don't get how that works. How the fuck you do a beta for emotes? It makes no sense to me. But yeah, follower emotes are there now. So you don't have to be sub to use the emotes, right? I'm going to get a bunch of new emotes for subs, right? But you guys have five emotes you can use now. Great. If, you, if you're followed. And then once the animation stuff comes out, I'll be putting the Chad Wellington stuff from, uh, from what, what was the extension called? BTTV. Right? I'll be uh, putting Chad Wellington's little animated gift there too, when that comes available. The way she destroyed the evidence was obscene. Ryunosuke. Yes. We come this far, but now, now you're the only one who can finish it. What? What do you mean? We've lost a vital piece of evidence, it's true. So, so if there's any clues left for us to use now, they must be in your head. Hey. Hey, Cosma. Thanks for the advice, my guy. But it also sounds like you have it figured out. So why don't you just fucking tell me? Because both your career and my ass is on the line. Thanks. You told me before that your powers of observation were the only thing you could really depend on. Well, yes. That's true. <laughs> see prodigy oh yeah she is a prodigy but that's not the point the point isn't that she's a prodigy and she's a lawyer right i mean not a lawyer prosecutor prosecute a eh. prosecutor can't speak for a moment that's not the point the point is that maya's like this like even when she's like growing up she's still this dainty little fucking thing and then francesca is just stacked and it's like wow that makes no sense that's a grown-ass woman, dog. I thought she was around the same age as fucking Phoenix. Well, yes, that's true, but... But I didn't manage to notice that this woman was a foreigner with a swan on her head. Yeah, I didn't think that swan was alive either. So think back now. Try to remember every last detail about the scene that day. Everything you saw, everything you felt, every color, every smell. What I saw, what I felt. Every color. Is Cosmo right? Somewhere in the in the vibrant memory of the same scene in my head. Could there be another clue to expose? Okay, first of all. That's not in the photo that they took. That just manifested out of nowhere. Go fuck yourself. Second of all, how can we prove this? Because the photographs are new. There's no color there. There's a clue. Well, there's gotta be a clue. My ass is on the line here. Actually, Cosma, I think I might have, have something. Thinking back over everything I saw, I think I might have uncovered another clue. Right. Not where your head was headed, but a fair point. Exactly. It's like, 
It's so confusing. Francesca makes me confused. You look at her and you go, well, that's illegal until the third game. <laughs> it's like, how? How does that make sense? <laughs> how convenient. Exactly. He's like, wait, there was blood there. You always have something up your sleeve, don't you, Ryanosuke? Come on, then. Let's whip the smug sm Let's whip the smugs. Let's whip the smug smile off that Englishwoman's face with some evidence. All right. I can't wait. It's been... I'm not saying that word. Because I will fuck it up. <laughs> it's been doing something to me for a while. Something that feels amiss in my memory of that day. That's a, that's a choice word that they put there. They did that on purpose. Whatever it is could be the key to arriving at the truth about all this. It's here somewhere. The clue that shows who Dr. Wilson's real murder must have been. I wonder, is it the fucking blood that just manifested itself? The fucking Deus Ex Machina that I'm looking at right now. <laughs> nice swerve. Exactly, right? Now, here's the fun part about that swerve. I can say it. I was born with the right to say it, but I'm not saying it. <laughs> Inspector Hosonaga, answer me this. Yes? What is it? He's still miles away, probably thinking about that bottle being smashed. I would be too, Jesus. As you said a number of times now, you strive for perfection in your investigations, don't you? Absolutely. I wonder, therefore, if perhaps you took anything else from the scene of the crime. Like, for instance, the plate of steak that you took to the victim's table that day? Wait a minute. What are you trying to... Where are you going with this little boy? Where... Lady, we're like one year apart. Hop off my fucking back. <laughs> it's just a memory that's been troubling me. Game's trying to catch people lacking with that phrase, and exactly, right? Now I wonder how many highlights we have of that, of people playing this game. Just like when Monokuma's like, I'm feeling a little black today. And I'm like, are you now? <laughs> I saw the scene shown in this photographic uh, print with my own eyes. And I saw that on the wooden base of the plate that the steak was served on was a splatter of blood. What? Just a little schmeckle. A little schmeckle of blood there. Oh, really? And what of it? Obviously, that must have happened when you shot the professor. Hey, I said it earlier in this case. You can check the last stream. I went, man, there's no blood at the scene of the crime. That's weird, considering that he was shot. <laughs> now, that can't, now that can't be the case. Take a good look at the... Look at this photograph. <laughs> the, rel uh, the relative position of everything there. The plate of steak, almost directly behind the victim. If I'm supposed to have shot Dr. Wilson in the chest from the front, there's no way blood from the victim could have ended up directly behind him. There's some fucking CSI type shit going on right now. <laughs> it's like, take, look at the blood splatter. It stops there. Take some fucking thread and wind. And, thread and wind. Some fucking thread and just connected all parts of the wall just to see the trajectory of the blood. For blood to have made it onto the plate, it implies the plate was between the... I said wine, I meant to say twine. It's bothering me. I'm sorry. I had to, I had to explain myself. The plate was between the victim and the shooter. Which means the shooter must have been sitting opposite the professor, as you were. Jezebel Brett. I beg your pardon. Ooh, pardon. This is beyond ridiculous. Fabricated nonsense. Is the court seriously expected to believe something the accused has apparently just remembered seeing? Hold it. Why not? That's what you guys been doing all fucking day. Why can't I do it? This. 
This could be the moment that my entire career in the police force has been leading to. Inspector, you mean? Yes, I took the plate in the interest of preserving evidence from the scene of the crime. I took it, meat and all, and I don't care if they call me a crime scene thief because of it. See the music still pops off? Oh yeah, it definitely does. I actually really like it. Instead of a, instead of a, uh, you know, like hard, what, what's the, what's the description I'm trying to go for? Instead of like a fast pace, action packed, like time to solve the mystery, right? We now have a slow, chilling, cunning, you know, moment of reprieve. Just think about it, having it all come together slowly, yet consistently until you get to the matter at hand. What caused it all? <laughs> you did what? I took the steak that you had been eating, Miss Brett. I took the steak that the sergeant had been eating. One of the best soundtracks in the series? Oh, really? I'm happy to see what comes, what becomes of it, like later in this game and the second game. I did it all in the name of justice. I mean, but can they beat Maya's theme though? Cause I still think about it every day. I like Maya's theme. It's good. Then we can find out for sure whether or not this blood stain on Miss Brett's plane. You must examine it now. Inspector. The court wishes to examine the plate from the victim's table immediately. Yes, sir. Sorry for the delay. Here's what you ordered. The steak. Well, what about the blood? Is there blood on it? Of course there isn't. Quickly, Inspector. The blood man! Show the court! The blood man! Do it! Like, even the judge loses his composure. He's like, come on, man! Do it! Of course. Examine the plate at your leisure. Hmm. No. No blood. I don't know, man. Uh, I find it weird that there's a missing little dangle dangle over there. Right? Wouldn't, wouldn't there be something there? Just, you know, just lift it up. Lift, is there blood under it? Lift it up. No blood. No blood anywhere. But, no. That's impossible. Massacre. I know I saw it. I'm sure of it. It's under. It's under the thing. It's always right. It was right there on the table behind the professor. There was blood on the side of the plate. <laughs> what an unbecoming expression, little boy. You see? This is why I always say you can't trust what the Japanese tell you. Wow, you're very just super racist. I couldn't agree more. In the case of- You're Japanese, you piece of shit. You fucking sellout. <laughs> in the case of the disgrace of the Empire. Wait, in the case- Did I read that right? Probably didn't. I believe we may finally have reached a conclusion in this trial. Let's hope so. This let's pretend attempt at courtroom proceedings is painful to watch. But I do promise to do my best to forget all about it when it's over. Until I kill the next victim, and then I'll remember it all again. <laughs> this sorry looking steak reveals the facts all too clearly. If the sorry looking accused wishes to examine it again, be my guest. Well, I'll examine it, you piece of shit. Was the plate I saw or, or thought I saw just a figment of my. Was the plate. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I got confused for a moment. Let's examine this bad boy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Just, just, get a little, just get a little bit under there. You know? What the f- What is that? Wait, that's a coin. What the? What in the world is this? I think it's a Koban coin. And the, hill, and the hallmarks is from the Hoei era, I believe. No, 
I don't mean what it is. I mean, what's it doing there? Wait, did you say it was a Hoei Koban? Yes, and apart from the meat juices, it looks to be in good condition. I imagine it's very valuable. <laughs> Lady gives you the slight dolly but That's what I said, right? During the first stream when we were introduced to her, I'm like, we can't see her face. But if we look up and I see anything that resembles Dahlia, I'm gonna lose my shit. <laughs> right? I'm still- hey, I'm still stuck on that last trial, right? Fucking... The whole entire time, you people doubted me. I was like, there's a demon in here, there's a demon in this room, a demon did it. I was right. That girl's a fucking demon. Spirit possessing people and shit, come on. This isn't the first time today that there's been talk of a Hoi Koban. I've heard of pearls before swine, but I've never heard of bil billion? What? Billion and... Oh, okay, whatever, I'm not even gonna fucking... <laughs> and I don't think you ever will again. This is extraordinary, though this means... Means is the, means is the coin the dude was looking for. That also means... If the woman ordered this... I mean, she totally stole it. She's a little fucking thief. Certainly never expected to find a precious coin underneath a thick cut of meat. Oh yeah, well you haven't been working the corner of fucking 6th and 5th. <laughs> that was terrible. It's from the Hoei era too. That would make it really quite valuable. It's well marinated in juices. As <laughs> Okay. What? You thinking of eating it? No! But the next time I order a steak in an expensive restaurant, one thing's for sure. My heart's gonna be racing as I lift up the meat and peer underneath for a prize. Guys. 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 One can only have so much comedy gold. Literally right in front of you. Once I lift up that meat and peer underneath for a good old prize. Okay, alright, okay. I think you find having the wrong end of the stick of I think you might have the wrong end of the stick about this, Ryanosuke. A Kaban coin underneath the stick. There's only one logical explanation. That lady's a fucking thief. Alright. This is it now. I've lost. Ryanosuke! It's not over yet. Not until the final gravel. Gravel, gavel, whatever. Never stop believing in yourself. Keep looking forward, no matter what. Believe in myself. Really. Hmm. Maybe I should at least examine the evidence before... <laughs> before I come to a conclusion here. As the evidence requested by the defense has not been shown to be problematic in any way, I presume in, I presume any further explanation of, of what explanation examination of evidence in this trial will be unnecessary. Does the defense have any objections that bloodstain was going was going to clinch the trial for me? Can this plate of steak reveal any other clues at all? There's another clue. Your Excellency, please wait. This plate of beef is hiding another clue. Another clue that will reveal the shocking truth. Attention! The only thing that's shocking here is your unhealthy fascination with beefsteak. Listen. A man likes a big cut of meat in his mouth, alright? That's all I'm saying. Your Excellency, <laughs> I think I might... I might have made myself clear, haven't I? I will not be able to turn a blind eye to any more unnecessary... Pro procrastination in this trial. That's a big word. I'm sorry, Miss Brett, but we must assure a thorough examination of the evidence. I will not give a ruling until I'm completely satisfied that all reasonable doubt has been dispelled. I see. As a newly affirmed ally of my country, that's still, uh, that's still your position, is it? Thank you, Your Excellency. <laughs> Ryanosuke orders the shmeat. That's what I need. Man, the moment you say that, I'm just... My mind flashbacks to a point, and uh, if you ever played Persona 5, 
which I'm pretty sure a lot of people have. Well, actually, Persona fans don't play Persona. <laughs> but, um, you know, a lot of people have seen Persona 5. There's a moment where one of your friends go, man, don't you love that feeling of hot noodles going down your throat? And I was like, dude, come on. Slurping up hot noodles down your throat. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Counsel for the defense, you will now clearly show the court what you're what you're alluding. Right precisely on the plate of beef, there's this new clue found. You just gotta lift it up, you know. Hit it at the right angle. Yeah, yeah, we we we've been through this already. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh huh. I'm not rereading this. Jesus, fuck. There's no, there's no skip dialogue. There's a skip dialogue option, but it's only for like things you've read already. So I guess that means like, since we didn't technically beat the trial, they won't let us do it. Anyways, coin. Yes, 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 we've been through this. <sighs> Damn it. Next time I order a steak, expensive restaurant, one thing's sure, my heart's gonna be racing as I lift up that meat and look for a prize. Alright, we done here? Oh shit, I forgot. I was pressing the examine button, not the present. There you go. I'm sorry, did that just say got him? <laughs> did that just say got him? Got him. So you can't skip text through settings options. There is an option. I'll show it now. There is an option. Uh, is it in gameplay? Yeah. Text skip. Enable or disable the skipping of unread text in the main game, right? So, if you turn it on, you'll be able to skip everything. But I turned it off just for the, you know, for the off chance that I may misclick at some point or something like that. Right? I don't want to do that. But, for some reason, I guess since the trial isn't technically finished, we, uh, when re-examining things, you're not able to skip that. I don't know why. I pressed every button. I tried to. <laughs> Okoban? What on earth? A Hoeira one at that. Miss Brett? This is, in fact, the beefsteak that you ordered at the restaurant on the day in question, isn't it? Tell me. Why is there an old coin seemingly hidden underneath that meat? Or should I say, got him. See, he said, he said, got it, right? I heard him say, got it. But I think the words that appeared was, got him. <laughs> Which I was like, wait a minute, did he just literally, did the game just literally go, you got him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, got him. What a ridiculous question. How should I know? I've never seen that thing before in my life. I don't know how, that's impossible. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but I want no part of it. Then how the fuck did you eat the steak? Did you slug your way onto the plate? Like, wh wh what's going on with that? I fail to see how this is relevant. A coin underneath the meat. That could simply have been a careless mistake by the chief in the moment of distraction. Objection! Don't be absurd. We're supposed to believe that it's happened by accident in the kitchen? A rare Hoei Kaban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak. He like got him better? Exactly, I know everyone loves got him better. It's, 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 uh, unrefined. That's what we like about it. If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll rip my own- I'll rip my ticket to Great Britain right now. He's right. It can't be a coincidence. Your Excellency. Yes, Counsel? A rare Hoei Koban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak. If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll give up my lawyer job right now. Objection! By all means, don't let us stop you. No one invited you anyways. Perhaps, little boy, you should release, you should release, that is, you, who is relevant. Wait, what? 
Realize, my bad. Why did I say release? What the fuck is wrong with me? Realize! Even though I am the one on trial here, the point is, it's essential that we ask the owner of this coin if he can explain what it's doing under the stake. The owner? Yes, it's obvious. There's only one person it can belong to. The owner of the Kaban that was found underneath the beef steak. Is our old man! Take that! The old man that talks like Yoda. Obviously, it can only be the antiques dealer and owner of Ryu. God. Razute. Cur God, I can't. Curio. Curio, I think that's how it pronounces. Kurikuda. Curie. Curie. What? As in Mr. Cucumber something? She's got the idea. <laughs> Honestly, these ridiculous Japanese names are quite unfathomable. Ah, uh, yes. The old man who testified earlier alongside the military sergeant, correct? Yes, Your Excellency. I remember him saying that he was up to something with his Kaban coin when it happened. At exactly the moment the gun was fired. The gunshot interests me not. I was far too busy on the floor, getting down doing the dinosaur. Too busy on the floor? Sorry, what were you doing? Hunting for treasure! Indeed, the Hoei Era Koban, my prized coin. Then, this Hoei Koban, do you mean to tell me? Objection! No, no, no. Please, why would Kurikata san's Koban be sandwiched between the victim's beefsteak and its plate? It makes no sense. Yes! Which is why I'm asking to bring Korikuda-san back to the witness stand, so we may ask him. Officer, bring both witnesses that testified earlier back in here. Tell them to back that ass up. <laughs> Without a moment's delay. Almost spilled your hot cocoa at the dinosaur comet? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, that old man must be doing the dinosaur. He's about to fucking go extinct like them. That got real dark real fast. <laughs> I can't believe we... Damn it. Now I'm now I reminded myself of Dinosaur Office, the final episode where, like, the fucking meteor's coming down. I can't believe we come back around to that pair again. But I have a hunch, a strong hunch. As if we chase down the real significance of this Koban, we'll find that it's a key element in the case. Oh my fucking god, this is the first trial, and it is the longest trial I think I've ever done in this fucking series. I'm trying to think. <laughs> What's this all about? Why have I been called up again? Do you realize that it's dinner time for my little baby, I uh, I know. When my son's belly is empty, He's fiercer than a pack of wolves. Exploited by the police we were. Like miserable dogs forced to bear false witness. And when cast from the courtroom, myself, I became ruined man with the trace. Trice, something, I don't know. A worthless withered antique. Nothing more have I say. Have I to say. The sun has set on this. Rasute shop owner's existence. Wow, you're really depressing. <laughs> Be that mad as it may, Kurikuda-san, something has been... has... Uh, fuck. Something has come to life that requires your clarification. Oh, rating with a party of two. Thanks, Nessie... I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Nessie Legacy? I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. That... That's... Yes. That, oh, my bad, not the voice. That's, yes, that's it. The one, the very one, the very exact one. <laughs> my voice hurts. The very exact one that it is. The resplendent, splendiferous Hoei treasure that my rusty bones managed to misplace that fateful day. Why is this man's shoe on the table? Hmm, as I thought. Young man, enlighten this decrepit old fool. Put me out of my misery. Wow. 
<laughs> no worries. Who am I? Well, hi. My name is Firestone. <laughs> no. Uh, hey there. I'm a lonely little loser who streams, right? Oh, how am I? I thought <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great, you know. I'm still uh I had a I had a very fun Christmas whereas uh I work security and one of the shops got broken into, so I had to deal with that shit. But um other than that, I'm doing fine. And now we're here playing this. <laughs> Where? Where where was my treasure? Where was it dropped? Oh, um, I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere. We found your coin sandwiched between a beefsteak and its plate, soaking in the seasoned meat's juices. Did you really have to describe it like that? Sandwiched? Soaking? Oh my, I haven't had that experience in 50 years. Clearly, it couldn't have fell, fallen there by accident. Which means, somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. Somebody concealed my Hoei treasure between a slab of meat and a metal plate. Who would do such a thing? Such an unconsiderable thing. There are four people on the stand, by the way. I just want to point that out. This, this has gotten all out of hand. Excuse me, can I say something? Yes, of course. Enjoying the game? <laughs> We're streaming it yourself on the second game. Oh, really? Shit. <laughs> Damn it. That means I got a lot to do. No, I'm enjoying it. Um, uh, shit. Was it earlier this year? When did I start the Phoenix Wright stuff? I think it was last year. Yeah, I started playing Phoenix Wright last year with the HD collection, right? We did all that. That whole playthrough, all those streams are on the YouTube channel. But, you know, needed to take a break from that because that was a lot to do, right? Those three games. And now we're coming back with the, uh, with this series, the Great A series, because, um, because I needed to go back to this world. And I, I honestly do want to play all the games, right? But I feel like I should play this before going into, um, what, the Miles Edgeworth games and then, uh... And then the Apollo Justice stuff, right? So, so far, I'm enjoying it. But, god damn it, this first trial is pretty long. And I'm happy that it's not just a glorified tutorial the whole entire time. <laughs> Proceed, Inspector Hosonaga. I mentioned this earlier on, I mentioned this earlier on in the trial, but... I was working undercover in the restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. The secret undercover operation. Le Carnival is a high-class Western cuisine restaurant that attracts wealthy diners, including many foreigners. No kidding, the last game you streamed was this game? Beat it before the localization? Oh, sh wait, what? Wait. You played the Japanese version of this? Or did, or was it like a fan tra translation? I can't imagine. Voices hoarse after doing too many voices. Oh yeah, trust me. I'm a, outside of my streams, I'm a very quiet person, right? I only talk when needed and I don't talk that loudly, which is why even using them, which is why getting the audio down for me is a little hard because I don't, I don't talk loudly, right? So definitely after these uh, games, like both this and Danganronpa, and and we did Conception a while back, we still gotta go back and play that game. But you know, doing these visual novel type games, at the end of every stream, I'm just like on the verge of death. Recently, there's been a run, and I remember one time. Sorry, I had to, I had to, <laughs> I had, to I had to interrupt myself there. Uh, I think it was during the. Was it? No, no, no. I think it was Justice for All, where uh, going back into Phoenix Wright, I streamed the game for like 10 hours? I don't remember. 10 hours, I think. 
So it was really bad after that. <laughs> um, recently there's been a run of similarities. Uh, excuse, ah, fuck. Been a run of similarly executed thefts targeting the restaurant's rich clientele. A number of such incidents have been reported to police bureau. Hmm. Wicked crimes indeed. We wanted to nip the case in the bud quickly, especially with so many foreigners being affected. So that's why you were sent in. That's why you were sent in un undercover, is it? Yes. I took on the job of the waiter at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. It's. Oh my god. Now that I'm thinking about multiple voices, my mind went back to Larry Butts. Is his ancestor in this series? Am I gonna have an excuse to throw in the Shaggy impression again? It seems likely that the Caban incident is the work of the same thieves. Let's see. The Scarlet Letter fan translation. Okay. Uh. Do you wish the newer Phoenix Wright games were out on console and Professor? Oh yeah, I I, I want to play Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. I want to play both Professor Layton and that game, right? I want to get into all the series, honestly. Um, also, uh, I want to touch Ghost Trick at some point. I think that's what it's called, right? Because I think I think there's a I think Miles shows up in that game or Gumshoe or someone. I don't remember. Professor Layton is a Nintendo IP. Yeah. Nintendo is very strict on their bullshit. <laughs> hmm. So unbeknownst to us, there was a master thief at the work in the restaurant as regular basis. The place was already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but... The identity of the person who stole and hid Kurikata-san's Koban is all too clear. What? 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 <laughs> I think the court I think the court would like to hear the defense view on this matter. Tell us, who's the despicable scoundrel that stole Kurikata-san's Koban and hid it under the stake? Well, there's only two possibilities I see it. It can either be you, but I don't think it is, and it can superly be you. Take that! Yes, seems like a likely candidate for a Caban thief. No, come on, Rinos. Huh? You shocked me, Kazuma. Not as much as you shocked me. No one could have approached the table unnoticed. Are you fucking serious? I noticed you crazy fool. You couldn't have missed that. I'm not sure you could be calling Kurokata on a crazy fool. It's you I was calling the crazy fool. Oh well that's mean. I don't believe I have heard you correctly, Counsel. Damn, really? You fucking serious with that? No way. Take that! Yes, seems like a likely candidate for Kavon. Wait, what the fuck? What are you on about? No one could have approached the table unknown as even the crazy f Okay. Hmm. Really, those are my two candidates for who could have possibly stolen it. Tell us, who's the speckled scoundrel that stole Kurokata's son and hid it under the stake? What the fuck? The only other person is Wilson and himself. No fucking way. Wait a minute. Are they both thieves? Is it a possibility that these two were working together? And she's like, nah, I want the money for myself, dog." I'm sorry, I'm just a little confused here. Oh, like a recap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold up. What the hell's going on here? All right, police have already seen several crimes. I don't know about the match file. Identify the person who stole and hid Krakana's Caban is all too clear. Well, it's obviously not clear to me. Take that! 
that! Then the only other person is the fucking sergeant. But why? But why and how? It's the only other person possible. The only other person in the restaurant besides me. Take that! Uh huh? Alright, obviously it can only be you. Sergeant Isanosa. What? How? How dare you? You. you monster. Monster? I stole that Coban, did I? I'm the master thief of Le Carnival, am I? You're just suspecting me because I have a sweet stash. You're seriously accusing me of these crimes, cadet. But it wasn't me. It was Ido. Ido is the mastermind behind it all. What? Your child? You would push the blame of your crimes onto your own son? An innocent little baby. It's you who's the monster, Sergeant Nosa. But Nosa, it wasn't me. Oh, he's not a son, it's a grown man. <laughs> clippity cloppity clippity clip. What the fuck is going on here? That child just broke his back. You're an old ass man, aren't you? I'm confused. <laughs> Nippon Imperial R R G oh, fuck. Nippon Imperial Army Sergeant Isanosa preparing to stand down in the Supreme Court, sir. Is that baby a baby? Is that baby an old man? What, what's going on? Do any of you know of the extraordinary low wages that Nippon Imperial Army pays those to pays those it expects to keep our country safe? I understand that the temporary increase in taxation owing <laughs> owing to the recently ended conflicts remains in place. And I have heard that it's hard for lower-ranking soldiers to make a living, yes. All I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant. The place is heavily- is- is heavy- what? Heaving? My bad, I can't even read no more. I lost all ability. <laughs> the place is heaving with money. Every three days, I go there and do reconnaissance for a target. And I enjoyed chomping my way through a good steak at the same time. It sounds like he doesn't bother with a knife and fork, even. Which is worrying... Which is worryingly believable. And your target that day was the old man and his Goban? Yes, sir. He was an easy mark. I slipped the coin into my pocket without any trouble at all. Hmm. A variable phantom thief. I was all set to leave the stake. I was halfway through devouring when it happened. Yes, when the professor was shot. I knew that if the police conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. I do too. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could on the double. I slipped it under the stake, hoping that I'd be able to rendezvous with it again at a later date. What? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Perhaps you could carry on with this absurd prattling in your own time. Well, Miss Brett. Oh, of course, dear lady, of course. How rude of us. I'm quite sure there's no need to detain you any longer at all. 
Praise the sun. May the esteemed gentlewoman please be excused, Your Excellency. Indeed. The thief of the Caban was clearly perpetrated by this baby saddler. <laughs> Sergeant? Okay. It would certainly appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. Nonsense, is it? Uh, well, oof. As the youngins say nowadays, that was a big oof. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense, it's pure madness. Very well. Now that all questions concerning this witness testimony has been answered, I see no further justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? What is going on here? Alright, wait, so... Uh, hmm. The meal Miss Brett ordered for lunch. Huh. Maroon from the victim's table after the incident. But... Okay, here's my question, though. He said he hid the coin under a piece of meat, right? Okay. Wouldn't he be talking about the food at his table? Unless he got up, walked over to the crime scene, lift the fucking meat up, and threw the coin under her plate? Right? Under her food? Because if that's the case, then she's lying about ordering food. Should we look into that? <laughs> right? Come on, guys. My ass is on the line here. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. Oh, you little murderous bitch. And a good day. Come on, Ryunosuke. I'm out of ideas, man. Ryunosuke, what's the matter with you? It's no time for daydreaming. Oh, no. It's just... Something about Miss Barrett's parting words. They got me thinking. I can't quite work out what exactly, but something she said jarred with me. Really? Hmm. Thank you, actually. Good luck, everyone, and good day. Hmm. All will be revealed. I know all will be revealed, but listen, the way I play these games, I try to beat it to the punch, right? As much as I can. I mean, I did it with Danganronpa V3, especially since I fucking <laughs> almost through halfway throughout the game. I already I stated what the ending was and people were like, no, you're nowhere close. And I'm like, oh, yeah, OK, whatever. <laughs> I feel like there was a contradiction in there somewhere. Something didn't quite add up. If that's the case, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard. Sorry. You can think later, but if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over. Hold it! She said good day, but it's not a good day. It's raining. What? <laughs> that can't be serious. Come on, that can't be serious. The game never told me it was raining outside, and also, isn't just a courtesy? I would fo- yeah, I would focus on the fact that she said good luck. More than that. <laughs> uh, isn't it a thing in fucking- I'm sorry. Isn't it a thing in, uh, in England or- Britain or whatever the fuck, where people don't say have a good day because it's like being presumptuous. Instead, they they say something else. I forgot what it is. But they don't tell people like, oh, hope you have a good day or whatever. Because they're like, that's rude to tell someone to have a good day. What if their day is going bad? What is it now? I'm afraid just one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. How many times has he said one last time? I'd like to explain the contradiction in your parting words from just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? Objection! 
What new what new wait, <laughs> what new student nonsense is this? Well, the parting word what parting words are you talking about, Ryunosuke? Okay, so it was earlier. Okay, hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. And as for picking up your steak and butting into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposes an undeniable contradiction. That's not his... That's not his food. So did I call it? Did I call it or did I call it? Come on, come on. That's not his food. The picture has a knife and fork next to the steak. That's her food. Come on. I'm gonna need to see evidence, Council. If Miss Brett's words truly contradictory, where's the evidence that proves it? Oh, yeah? How about... Which one would I choose? Probably this one, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know. Take that! The photographic print of the scene taken immediately after incident occurred. See? This is how I play these games. I try to cut it off. I try to do it before they tell me. <laughs> what interesting is the play to stay- Sometimes Phoenix Wright has gotten me, though. I will not lie. They have gotten me sometimes. A lot of times. A good number of times. <laughs> what interest what's interesting is that the plate of steak that you can see on the victim's table. The steak that Miss Brent had been eating before the professor walk uh professor was killed. Yes, go on. More accurately, Your Excellency. The steak that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. Now you're just now you're just splitting hairs. Not true. Doesn't something about the steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What on earth do you mean? The fact that the steak has been ripped apart by an animal, but she uses a knife and fork. How come it's not neatly cut apart? It's extremely obviously. I'm talking about the shape of the edges where it's been eaten. I see if you noticed it too, Miss Brett. Notice what exactly, Counsel? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed, no English woman, no, my bad, no English man would have, would have contemplated picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. Of course she did. She's a refined English gentlewoman herself. Then take a look at the steak, and particularly the edges where it's been eaten. Obviously some Nigel Thornberry looking motherfucker took a mean chop out of that one. <laughs> As you can see, there's clearly defined barbaric teeth marks there. It looks like Miss Brent has released, has realized something. I keep saying released, I don't know why. So if the witness, as she claims, wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. Objection! But what's your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravenous. <laughs> ravenous. Oh shit, she took out the handkerchief. Oh no. Um, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course. This will all be over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured I'm about to put this rookie in his place. I've heard enough, you irritating little spectacle samurai relic. Of course, <laughs> dear lady. What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? Clearly, the witness knows what this means. She realized the catastrophe, the cata wow, catastrophic implications these teeth marks in the stake have ever. I'm so sorry. I'm losing my ability to read as we go on. <laughs> Ryunosuke, do you know where you're going with us? Yes. 
Now at least it all comes together. The mysterious teeth marks in the stink that had allegedly been eaten with cutlery. Cutlery, my bad. The reason why the blood stain I know I saw somehow seems to have disappeared. And more importantly, I'm sorry. I didn't notice that. I didn't notice that. <laughs> it obscures the edges of the stake. And this is after the body was removed and the crime scene was tampered with. Plates were switched. The evidence that, that proves once and for all who, doc, who shot Dr. Wilson that day. I accept that these teeth marked in the stake are a little unnatural, as you put it, counsel. But what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Clever girl. <laughs> Everything. Yes, I believe that these barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount to conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond a doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Conclusive evidence? How many times have I heard that today? You wouldn't know the meaning of that phrase, typical Japanese empty threats. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been? What? But just because it hasn't been shown yet, doesn't mean that the evidence does not exist. Objection! This is absurd. The trial has run several hours already. <laughs> You're fucking telling me. <laughs> you said there's evidence yet to be brought forward? This can't be. I don't believe you have it. Objection! Oh my god. I don't. But there's someone who does have it. Someone in this very courtroom. And that person is willing to submit that piece of evidence I'm referring to. It will solve everything it will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Fuck. Very well. I have a feeling this will be my last request. Oh my god. Do you? Do you really? Do you really have a feeling? Because I don't anymore. Oh my god, I only have one pip left. Oh Jesus, fuck. Who has it? You. Bring it. The answer is obvious. It's Inspector Hosonaga. What? I have it? Yes. You. You think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? That's ridiculous. Oh yeah? Oh yeah, then why are you losing your composure over there? No, I'm not saying that. Everyone attention has been focused on the stake with the teeth marks. Yes. Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following. I'd enjoyed chopping my way through a good steak. As well as admitting to stealing Kurikata-san's coin, he told us that he slipped it under the steak. You watch it, cadet. I'm a superior officer. Sergeant Nosa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the steak that you put the coin under, in fact, your own steak? Tension! Affirmative, of course. I might be a soldier in the Imperial Nippon Army, but still. I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she mind me manhandling her meal. <laughs> I was getting ready for him to say manhandling her meal. <laughs> to hide something in it. In other words, the stake that the detective submitted as evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nosa's meal. But that makes no sense. The plate was taken from the victim's table. Objection. Yet the gentlewoman doesn't doesn't take bites out of her steak, nor did she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it. To even suggest such a thing would be an un 
for being an affront to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Exactly. Surely you're not you're going to suggest that the sergeant switched the two stakes over. You did switch the plates. Well, after it happened, the, um... When I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted my stake and hit the coin underneath it. But then, when the waiter announced he was an undercover policeman, I thought I had it. If he decided to investigate my slab of meat, I'd be in getting... What? <laughs> Sorry, I dropped my phone. Where, where was I? If he decided to investigate my slab of meat, that'd be it. I'd be getting my marching orders. So when the cadet here was arrested and taken off to the kitchen, I seized my chance. The one time the beginning lawyer actually connected the dots himself. Good for him. Oh man, I will say I actually do appreciate the fact that Cosma, even though being our like superior to us, supposed to be our uh, our um Mia, right? He himself gets confused over this shit. Meanwhile, Mia will always just sit there and be like, "Phoenix, you're doing it wrong. Cut it out. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you." <laughs> with military precision and timing, I switch my stake with the one with with one oh god with the one on the foreign lady's table. What? You can't have. I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. There was no time for strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what I had what had to be done. Unbelievable. However, fear not, prosecutor son. What now? I swear on the brass buttons of my uniform, that's all I did, sir. All you did? That's plenty, Sergeant. Yes! So, if Sergeant Nelson switched the plates over, it means he took Miss Brett's stake and the plate it was on back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Hosonaga. Yes. Earlier in the trial, you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's stake after the incident, but also the sergeant's. That to preserve evidence, you had to take both. That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot. What can that possibly tell us now? I mean a cold slab of tough meat. It can't have the, the slightest bearing on this case. Objection! No. You're not wriggling your way out of this one this time. I beg your pardon? Surely, you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the steak pan- wait, what? Why the steak pan promised to prove such a problem for you, no? Hmm. You're the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see the plate was to confirm something the, def the defendant remembers seeing. Yes. Thanks, he remembers. I'm quite sure of what I saw, Miss Brett. On the side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson, there was a clear splatter of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate you were eating from, Miss Brett. Let us not prolong this any further, Inspector. You will show the evidence to the court. Present the beef steak and plate that was originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident.
Yes, sir. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Here's the other steak and its plate. Please, feel free to examine it. Oh yeah? Huh. The blood stain. It's clearly visible. Look. Yes. Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the side of the plate. Shows that at the moment the victim was shot, he was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible for Narahoro-san to have shot the victim. It can't be. In fact, there's only one person who could possibly have shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. That's right. Miss Giselle Brett. It's you. Outdone by a Japanese? Me. By a Japanese schoolboy. No. No, no. What? It's having babies? <laughs> oh my god. Someone gonna help her? Oh my god, it was a black chocobo. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Did she turn into an angel and fly away? What happened? She became fucking Mother Mary for a second. Jesus Christ. Literally. Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. Most unbecoming behavior for an English gentlewoman. Forgive me. I don't know, you started spitting out babies left and right. Well, Miss Brett, I think it's time you told the court what exactly happened that day. The truth, this time. Gladly, Your Excellency. It was I who took the professor's life, using cure. By the way, is that how you're supposed to pronounce it? Cure? I assume it is. I assume that's the joke. As you summarized, I chose a particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you plan to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison will be found in his water. Because cure is unheard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course, I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only intended to see the professor take one tiny sip of his water, and it would all be over. I would place the steak I had ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone, and leave immediately, however. Before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter. But the fact that you decided to come over to greet the professor... ...meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. I just got a notification that someone on Steam is playing Tales of Vesperia. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Steam. Uh, you always said it as QR. See, that's what I was- Oh, wait, what? QRA? Q- QRA? QRA. Like that? That makes sense, too. I, I would see that. Yeah, I can see that. Hmm. 
Oh no. I assume like well first I was pronouncing it as QR, right? But then or Q rare or whatever the fuck. But then I was like, wait a minute, are they doing that weird British thing where like certain thing certain vowels are just super silent? <laughs> certain vowels and letters just don't exist, but it's spelled that way anyway. Like Kaluar. <laughs> fuck you, British. Fuck the British. Fuck you guys. <laughs> You're fucking up the English language! Even though you had it first! In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. Or as the British would say, paralysized. That's a lie, they wouldn't say that, but I feel like they would. <laughs> I made sure he was sitting in his chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point. So, I concocted a plan on the spur of the moment. I plan to pin- oh wait, my bad. <laughs> Wrong character! I plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on the innocent man. I happen to know that the professor always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. You shot him with his own gun? I had the bottle of cure in my handbag. And... My own pistol concealed under my skirt. Okay. So Ryanosuke was right. He was like, if only I can lift her skirt up. And prove to everybody that she's packing heat. <laughs> she's packing under there. Under your skirt. So I was right. There were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. Placed where you were sure that I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun, as I intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up, That's when you shot the professor with your own gun. Even, even though at that point he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused a commotion, at which point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assumed Naruhoto-san was the culprit and apprehended him. I took him to the pantry that, that adjoined the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor in his chair around. Because, of course, you needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he picked up the gun. So, there you have it. I gotta say, her um, impromptu plan was way smarter than the one she originally had. <laughs> so it turns out that she was just smart by accident. That's the entirety of my misdemeanor. Your misdemeanor? You killed the guy! Your Excellency? Yes? Okay, great. You killed the guy. Nice. Uh, but why? I wonder. Might I speak with you in private later? You're gonna, you're gonna suck him off, aren't you? I shall call on you. That, that's not an answer I would like to hear. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. I hope you can forgive me. Naruhodo-san, I'm gonna see you again later, aren't I? There's no fucking way you're getting away with that. Misdemeanor? Ugh! Oh, I worked so hard for that! This trial has finally run its course. Oh, go fuck yourselves. I presume the prosecution is in agreement. This can't be. Take uh, fuck, Takesuchi, Algie, does not lose what well, you just did. 
Huh, not to the likes of this rookie student. Man, your fucking, your ancestor's been losing the mind for decades. You better get used to it. Yunosuke Naruhoto. Yes? This insult to the Auchi family name will never be forgotten. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Definitely Dahlia vibes. Exactly, right? I'm I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it when she comes back, if she comes back, and the face reveal happens, we're just gonna see a spitting image of Dahlia. And I'm gonna be so fucking mad. You became you became conceited with age, Council. But the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. As they say in the new fuck. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke, but I fucked it up. Let, let's reverse that, you know, let's just rewind that. Let's pretend I didn't flub that. As they, as the new generation says, okay, Boomer. Hey, we did it. <laughs> and then we killed him. He actually looks better that way. You actually did him a favor. A thousand millennia may pass, and still the Auchi clan will never measure up to the Narahoto clan. Oh, damn. <laughs> this trial in the Supreme Court of Japan? Well, I believe go down in history at the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial system. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Ryonosuke Narahoto, presented an excellent case. One that we tried to stop many a times. The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern mythology. After all, it has only been a few short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world. But the Western idea of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring new methods of investigation and new procedures of justice. A new future of law waits but what it will look like, I cannot begin to imagine. Uh, it looks pretty much like the same type of bullshit you see here. <laughs> that's it for the, for the, oh God, that's for the young to pursue. Kazuma Asogi. Yes. After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious, to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can. Absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What the fuck was that about? Why do you look so grave all of a sudden? Never mind. As for you, Ryunosuke Narahoro. Yes, sir? In you, I sense, how can I put it, unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing you carry that onward. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant, Ryunosuke Naruhoto. Not? Guilty. Hey, cherry blossoms! Beautiful. Gets crazier from here. Ah, oh, shit. The legendary Cosma cut. <laughs> it's nice. When you do see her again, you will 1000% be surprised. I bet no one would guess when playing the game for the first time. I guess to see her in a specific situation or area. Oh. Everybody you asked was so shocked. Okay. All right. Now that you said that, my brain's racing. My mind instantly goes, oh, it's fucking the Fae, <laughs> the Fae ancestors. Uh, I would assume uh, Mikotoba is the Fae ancestors, but you know, they may not be. This court is now adjourned. All right, we did it. I'm not guilty. 
And with that said, I'll be right back. I gotta use the bathroom, like, badly. So just give me, like, five minutes. All right, we are back. <laughs> Had to run to the bathroom real quick. One of the few times that I'm happy that the bathroom is very close to my room. You know, after all this time, the one thing I didn't get to check is my badge. Proof that I am a student at the Imperial, Imperial, wow, at the Imperial Yume University. I always wear this on the collar of my uniform jacket. Look how beautiful it is. Oh, even has a nice little serial number on it. Ah, the symbol of Yumei University. Every student wears this pin with pride. It's funny, but most emblems seem to be either round or rectangular. I like this spike design, even though it doesn't really make any sense. Although, it does cause problems. Lots of students end up cutting their fingers on their... Hmm, on their badges. Perhaps it was the idea of one of the founders, a sharp pin for a sharp mind, or something like that. Either this will come into play later, or it's spiky because they're making fun of Phoenix. <laughs> right. I'm gonna spiky hair. All right, let's see what happened. Uh, let's see. One of the things you were spoiled on, but you were shocked. Oh man, fucking. Even though, even though our, I was fighting spoilers left and right during Danganronpa, there's still a lot of moments that shocked me, so that was cool. Let's see. Uh, really need to get to the second game. Well, we gotta play this one first. God. Sort of a downfall for the first game. Alright. As much of the build-up overall story for the second game. Uh, from what I've experienced. Oh, so you're heading to sleep? Alright. Thanks for stopping by, Breezy. I appreciate it. Um, tomorrow night, we're going to be starting the Persona 4 Golden playthrough. That's going to be fun. 
but I really do, let's see, but I really do like how all the cases are interconnected in some way. Yeah, exactly. That's one thing that I really did appreciate with, um, with, uh, whatchamacallit? The, uh, the first three games was that, you know, even after all the games, there's still a lot of build up. So that when you, when it all comes together at the third game, even like the newer characters that are introduced, it feels like they've been there for a while, right? It all hits pretty hard. It's all nice. I gotta say, I felt a little depressed at the end of Trials and Tribulations because I was like, oh, I was like, I want to hang out with these guys more. Oh no. Now I gotta say goodbye. We'll probably see them in Apollo Justice or some bullshit. I don't know, but... You know, after people telling me that we never get to see fucking Iris again... That's sad, man. Best girl. Best girl. Alright. 22nd November. 2.46 PM. I can't believe it. I can't believe what happened. I made it. I defended myself and made it through that hideous, hideous, hinderous trial. Ryunosuke, you finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Thanks, Cosma. <laughs> no, no, it was a pleasure to watch you at work. So, you owe me an extra large. Su oh, God, Suki cut. Fuck. Tsukiyaki. Hope that. Hope I said that right. From the place on Yume University Street. Don't forget. Good afternoon. All your hard work. Oh, I'm sorry. That's from a different voice. I was so. I was like. I was like. How do you con How do you continue your conversation like that? Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Now your hard work has certainly paid off. Congratulations to both of you for providing Naruhodo San's innocence. Providing. Proving. What the hell is wrong with me? Ah, our trusty, uh, fuck. Our trusty judicial assistant. You worked hard for the result, too, you know? Oh no, I didn't do anything. Thank you so much! Will you marry me? <laughs> if you hadn't had the research report of Miss Brett, I don't know how things would have turned out. TNT is P. Gates attorney. Oh, Trials and Tribulations? Oh, it's so fucking good. It's so good. It's so good that I'm still trying to. I'm still trying to see if the Iris case is my favorite over over the fourth case in the first game. Because they're both so goddamn good, right? Uh, you'll meet with I. Wait, what? Will you? <laughs> you'll meet with. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm I'm having a hard time reading that. I don't know why. I gotta put my glasses on. That's why I'm a fucking idiot. You will. What? <laughs> well, you, well, you, wait, what? I'm having, a, I'm having a stroke reading what you put, Legacy, Jesus. Well, you will meet an Iris soon, but this world's Iris. What? <laughs> You're giving me a stroke. <laughs> Uh, much more different character. Okay. All right. So I'll meet with her soon, but this version of Iris, right? <laughs> I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to the university and investigate. He fucking gave me a, a fucking stroke for a moment. Forgive me for intruding on court proceedings, Your Excellency. Susado Mikoroba, Judicial Assistant to the Defense. Speaking of Mikoroba... Ah, there you are. I believe congratulations are in order. Does anyone look at this guy and get reminded of uh, Gibora from fucking, you know, Zelda's dad from Skyward Sword? Because that's what I, that's where my mind goes. <laughs> Dude with the super eyebrows. You did an excellent job. Thank you, Professor. Oh no. It is I who should be thanking you, after all. Your efforts exposed the true criminal that took a life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh yes, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yume University, wasn't it? 
Yes, that's right. Professor Mikotoba studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic med medicine in Great Britain. Presumably, that's when you met Dr. Wilson. Exactly. In those days, we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, so you worked together. I never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago now, besides. It's your turn, Asugi. Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world. In science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course, in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what happens in the world's largest melting pot. I will. I'll learn all I can. I swear on this. The spirit of a Sogi clan. You're not taking the sword to Great Britain, are you? Of course I am. A Japanese man's katana is his soul. This blade shows me where I need to go. And cut down anything that gets in my way. I don't think you should do that last part. Yes, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. That reminds me. What happened to the woman? To Jezazel, uh, Jezazel, why'd I say it like that? To Jezazel, eh, to, Je to, to Jezazel, duh, to Jezazel Brett. I mean, after all, she's guilty of murder. Ah, yes, her. I heard she sucked off the judge, and she's scot-free now. <laughs> it's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's gonna face trial herself now. She's the true culprit, after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future for Shanghai. Wait, so she's going to China? What? Shanghai? Giselle Brett will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of consular judicature. What? Jizzer, jizzer, jizzer diction. I can't even fucking what? My ghetto dialect does not allow my mouth to make those movements. Inspector Hosonaga. One of these days, I'm gonna go to a fucking speeching class. <laughs> it was a hard-fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congratulate. But, but what's all this about a consultant? Fuck. Somebody help me here. <laughs> Consor- Consorler? Fog. Counselor? Counselor? Juris- Jurisdiction? Eh. I tried my best. That's all that matters. We cannot try this- uh, We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. What? You can't try her? Oh, but you tried me. But then who? Who's gonna bring her to justice? A British counselor, a British counselor court will hear her case somewhere far away, where her voice can't be heard. <laughs> oh man, brain's half asleep, so your typing is god awful. Don't worry, can, do you hear my reading? <laughs> it's fucking terrible. It surprises me why people even watch. <laughs> Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought counselor courts were a thing of the past now. It is counselor. I'm sorry. I don't know what the fuck happened. Right? My mind saw it used in a different way. So I'm like, it must be a different word. The word's counselor. The fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> that we signed the friendship treaty. Yes. In normal circumstances, you're right. Then, so long as it's not a serious incident of highly political nature to our represent to our respect eh, to our respected government, what the fuck? They can't invoke a counselor court just like that. Oh, can't they? Yes, she's a student. But it doesn't justify her government making secret agreements about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. That means she's related to someone. So Miss Press can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid that for the young student, today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. 
There was never any danger of competence for her. Did I say that right? Competence? I don't fucking know. I don't, know. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> Slowly lose my mind. The British Government Foreign Affairs Ministry has demanded that we hand over custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case of a foreign student committing murder very seriously. But it's all going to change from now. We can make it change. This is a time of great turmoil. This new era heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day, I have no doubt, that women will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming. And we're the ones driving it. That's how a coup starts. <laughs> Either a cult or a coup starts after that, right? It's, things must change now. Yes, and we will be the ones to do it. Well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. Time to more goofy anime fun. This evening calls for a celebratory drink. But Professor... You're right. This is no time for gloomy faces. I don't like the way his nose, like, changed position there. Did you guys see that? That was kind of weird. <laughs> it, like, snapped in place. We should be celebrating Ryunosuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start by having some fun. In that case, might I suggest La Carnival? As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with ample food and drink. I don't think I want to be anywhere near that place. Um, you're a detective, Hosonaka. Aren't you? Let's not worry about details for now. To the carnival! We will accompany- uh, Will you accompany us, Professor? Of course, the carnival's food is second to none. I shall go and attend to the paperwork for Narohodo san's release. Oh, yes, thank you. So Giselle Brett won't be tried here. I suppose that means we'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Kazuma? Yes, Ryunosuke. I just wanted to say thanks again, and that's all. You really saved my skin today. <laughs> I didn't do a thing. You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your work. Your skills made the difference, though. One day, I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Hmm. I'm not so sure about that. To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during the trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one destined to become a great lawyer, not me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on, be serious. If I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. That's a lie. But you have a natural talent for it. For being a defense lawyer, I mean. Oh no, not me. All the tense verbal combat, I never wanted to go through that ever again. I just did what you told me to, that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry? What do you mean, that's the point? Listen, Ryunosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Knowledge of the law? No. The ability to believe. To believe. Hey man, I don't think I want some dude carrying a sword with a fucking headband telling me to believe it, okay? I've seen enough of that already. To believe? To believe what? He's nuts. <laughs> a defense lawyer has to right for his- wait what? Has to fight for his clients. He has to believe in them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it. I'm human, just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have to make a choice about what to believe 
and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed into a corner. But being able to remain faithful to what you choose to believe in, even then. Well, that's not something that anyone can do. It's just a kind of special person. I just hit the shit out of my microphone. Believing in your client. Just look at today's trial. I'm a student lawyer with precious little real experience, but you never stop believing in me. Well, I... You face seemingly hopeless situations time and time again, but you never stopped looking for the truth. And in the end, you found it. Through your own efforts, and because you never stopped believing in me. Thanks, Cosmo. There's something I want to ask you, actually, Rinosuke. Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. It sounds serious. What is it? Ah, you're still here, are you? Oh, Inspector Hosonika. I've arranged some rickshaws for us. Let's go. Thank you. We'll be right there. Let's pick up this conversation again later. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. And your study to tour the Grand Britain. The Grand Britain? Why did I say that? The Great Britain. Don't, don't forget. The Grand Britain. <laughs> ah, yes. That too. And then he died. Dude, I'm not going to forget the first time starting Phoenix Wright, right? And I was like, man. I was like, man, Mia. You're really giving me like this Lisa Lisa vibe. I'm liking it. And then fucking... <laughs> And then I'm like, it'll be, and I'm sitting here, I'm like, it's, I'm like, why are you talking like that? Why you sound like you're about to die, right? And then Phoenix go, that's the last time I would ever see her alive. And I'm like, what the fuck? You serious? Just like that? Dead? But apparently death means nothing in the Phoenix Wright universe if your friend's a fucking psychic. So many very first trials came to an end. So many, my bad. So my very first trial came to an end. Kazuma. Professor Mikoroba. Sasuro-san, who acted as my assistant. Inspector Hosonaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still for some reason celebrates with us. It was because of the help and support of all these people that I managed to get through that trial. But no, but more importantly, Cosma hadn't yet managed to act his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. Am I going to Britain with him? Are we, are we going in the same place? Hey! I got an award. Don't I feel special? Of course I feel special. I feel great. I feel amazing. Fantastic, even. Fucking... Oh god, I've almost been streaming for eight hours. I'm not not eight hours, my bad. Three hours. Why the hell did I say eight? <laughs> Why did I say that? Maybe because it's almost like eight o'clock or some shit. I don't know. Let's see. Let's get into episode two. Oh my god, there's a lot of fucking episodes. Oh wait, no, there's only five. Okay, but it's gonna be long as shit though. The Adventure of the Unbreakable Spe Spec wait, Speckled White Speckled Bow. In a bow? corner of that small dark room, Sholmes and I waited with bated breath. In time, there came from the ventilator a hiss and a soft, almost growl-like sound. Suddenly, Sholmes sprang into action, lashing furiously with his cane at a point in the darkness. You see it, Wilson, he yelled, his tense voice reverberating through the air. I raised my dark lantern shutter, and the room slowly came into view. Thanks for the follow, I'm just gonna be quiet, cause the cutscene. corner, when he started whispering to me. 
The victim's most perplexing final words. The speckled band. I believe this is the terrible coil to which you referred, Wilson. In front of us was an enormous adder, its fangs bared as it threatened to strike. It truly was the most terrible speckled band I had ever seen. All right. That was a fun cutscene. Thanks for the follow. Matt Mass Attack. I appreciate it. Ooh, anime. So then, let us unravel this mystery. That is not the voice I expected you to have. What events led to this curious murder? Pray, do excuse me. The cabin door was bolted from the inside when the man was killed. No marks to suggest the bolt was tampered with in any way. So, this would appear to be a locked room mystery. In his final moments, the victim scrawled a message on the floor. Hmm. Almost certainly with the ink from this upset bottle. A Russian word. Uh. So, the victim was a Russian man then. And the letters are well formed, suggesting he was compass mentis at the time. Hmm, this is a most extraordinary script. And evidently, not penned by the same hand as this message. In fact, I deduce it was written by someone of a different nationality. This paper seal was placed just prior to the incident by the victim himself, I would venture. Well, what have we here? Who are you? And what do you think you're doing here? Da, da! No one must touch before maritime police come. We must wait! Shh. That won't be necessary. You see, in less than five seconds from now, I will reveal the killer to you. What? <gasps> don't be absurd! This is murder! I need cabin locked from inside! Ah, yes, the locked room. But that mystery is paper thin. You, you don't mean the culprit is in there? <laughs> who, who are you? And where have you come from? I'm a great British consultant detective, the only one in the world. Herlock Sholmes. I presume you must have heard of me. Is that me? Am I in the closet? Is that me? My head is throbbing. And that's not the type of head I'm talking about. <laughs> hey. What's going on? Something's not right here. There's trouble in the air. Yep, that was that was Rinosuke. I was in the closet. Wait. I can't move. What the why am I in handcuffs? Hmm. So you awake so you wake up now. You can tell this guy's a foreigner because he has blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> that's how that's how Japan tells you they're foreigners. Uh we had to drag you out of the wardrobe. I do not believe how you could not wake up. You are a true cold blooded man. You. You found me, then. Da. We found you. And now, you pay. You pay. Criminal. How long are you hiding in the tiny wardrobe? Hmm? Sorry? Now you have been found? It is time to admit your crimes. Unless you want to find out how cold the ocean is. No, no, I'm... I'll tell you everything. There's only one thing I'd like to know from you. Isn't that... Why did you do it? Why did you take his life? M Misato. Miss... Miss Misato. Wait. What did you just say? Take his life? 
Don't tell me Cosmo's dead. I'll kill you right now. I'll do it. Where is he? Where's Cosmo? Oh my fucking god, are you serious? <laughs> Need to tap out for tonight? <laughs> Thanks for the stream. Oh, no worries. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Hope to see you uh, tomorrow night when we start the Persona 4 Golden. Yeah, that's right. I said it weird. I know I did. I did on purpose. Or did I? Ha! Huh. You pretend to not know? You are a wolf in sheep's pelt. You are a killer. Do not try to make excuses. What? Cosmo-san was... Cosmo-san's body was discovered not long ago. Oh no, I killed Caesar. <laughs> oh shit. But his headband! Was it wrapped in a bubble for me? Soaked in his own blood? Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Here's this very cabin. <laughs> they want him to be dead. I thought we can avoid it. I really did. I really did. But he's dead now. He's dead now. That's not fair. <laughs> Here in this very cabin that was bolted shut from the inside. His... his body. Please. Do not try to tell us you are... you are doing... Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm having a moment. <laughs> Do not try to tell us you are doing this terrible thing in your sleep. Cosmo's dead? But he can't be. And these handcuffs. Surely you don't think that I... I have to know. Why did you take Cosmo Sun's life? Answer me, please. No. Cosmo. It was just two short weeks ago. Are you sure about this? Won't we get in trouble? <laughs> Don't you find it fun being a stowaway? Besides, how else could you come to England with me to study? It was really something else when they brought your luggage in here earlier. The way the Russian crewman just tossed your traveling case onto the floor. I thought I was gonna die. Oh my god. <laughs> I was in his pa He packed me up like a fucking lunch. Yes, I still can't quite believe that. Really didn't think you'd be able to fit inside my trunk. You must be even less of a man than you look. Oh, go fuck yourself, Cosmo. At least I'm not dead. Hey, honestly, I thought I broke every bone in my body. Hey, but you know what this means, Ryanosuke? That man's flexible. Get some good angles with that guy. Well, it's about 50 days until we dock in Great Britain. But if, you're com but if you confine yourself to my cabin here, I don't expect anyone will discover you. For 50 fucking days? I hope not. I get the feeling those Russians wouldn't be very forgiving of stowaways. There's a sturdy bunch, that's for sure. Back in motherland of Russia, you crush potato. <laughs> With your thighs. What I want to know is, why do we need to keep it a secret from the young lady? From our faithful judicial assistant, Mikotaba, you mean? From your close friend, more, more to the point. Surely we couldn't confide, surely we could confide in her, couldn't we? I don't believe she'd give me away. No, but if she knew that we'd done, if she knew what we'd done, that would make her guilty by association. It's best that only you and I know about this. I suppose so. Anyways. It's about the time that, that the stewardess is supposed to come and clean the cabin. So get in there, boy! <laughs> I know it's cramped, but you better get in there. I think it won't be for long. And anyways, compared to hiding inside my traveling case, it'll be a breeze. Yes, but what if the stewardess decides to open the wardrobe for some reason? Then I'll be, <laughs> then I'll be in it for sure. 
Well, that's when she opens it and you go, well, hello there, miss. Care to have a lovely evening? Stop worrying. I tell you what. Oh, uh, why don't you write keep out or something on the piece of paper? What? Then I can stick it over the wardrobe doors once you're inside. I don't know. We've only been at sea for about 15 days. How can this have happened? We were supposed to be going on this adventure to England, together. We leave you at next port. Stay quiet until then. Don't make more trouble for yourself. Murderer. No, I'm not a murderer. Da, you said before. But said you admit every everything about your crimes. No, that's not right. I mean, yes, I did stow away on the ship, but... Murdering my best friend? No one else could have done it. Admit the truth. The truth is you can go fuck yourself. Cesado-san. Please, tell me what happened. I need to know. Very well. But there's something I would like to ask of you, too. Those eyes. She looks like she's ready to destroy me. Someone take a screenshot of this and just put it up on a wall somewhere. <laughs> Those eyes. Ooh. Okay. This nightmare is getting worse by the minute. I suppose all I can do is try to find out what really happened. Tell me about Cosmo. He really has been killed, hasn't he? This isn't just a bad dream. And these handcuffs. They think I did it? They think I killed Cosma. When they found him, the cabin was locked from the inside. What do you mean? There's no access to the cabin via porthole window, and the bolt on the door can't be operated from outside. In other words, after the crime, the culprit couldn't have escaped through uh, these floor walls. I, I, what? I, I can't, I'm sorry, I had a moment there. <laughs> what? Or to put it another way, the culprit can only have been somebody inside this cabin. Um, uh, Mikotaba? As you're saying that to me, there's a fucking vent right behind you. <laughs> and it, I find it really hard that there's no other way in here. Or do you have some other explanation? Maybe the clear as fuck vent behind you? <laughs> how did he... How did he die then? What happened exactly? Are you still gonna deny the charges? Even despite the circumstances? Please, Sasato. You have to tell me. The cause of death is... Still undetermined. They don't know how he died? Ship's doctor is examining the body, but of course, he has no post-mortem analysis experience. I don't suppose we shall learn more until an expert has been consulted at our uh, at our next port. So presumably that means there's no obvious internal, obvious external signs of injury then. That's true. Yes. Can anyone tell me what exactly happened in the cabin? I don't understand it. Why would anyone want to kill Kazuma? Presumably that's something you knew the answer to better than anyone. Please. Whatever you say, you were here in the cabin after all. Wow, Suzanne, you just... <clears throat> I can't be mad at you for not having faith in me, but come on, we just... You just helped me prove my innocence, like, about about maybe two and a half weeks ago? Can you cut me a little a little slice of that pie? <laughs> oh, I pressed the wrong button, by the way. Oh, what the fuck is this? Cosmo would stick this over the door. The wardrobe for me says keep out. Hmm. All right. 
You can see the remains of glue used to stick over the wardrobe. Although it wasn't proper glue, of course. We didn't have any of it with us. So I... So I... Pul what? Pulver... Pulver... Pulverized? Oh, pulverized some... Okay, yeah. I pulverized some rice into paste. Oh, so it's rice. Use sticky rice. Okay. Store away like me, every single grain of rice represented precious rations. That's why I spared... That's why I spread it as thinly as I possibly could. Oh, okay. Interesting. People of interest? Just me and you. And Cosmo. Oh. Well, yes, I was, but... He would always walk before dawn and do his training first thing in the morning. I say walk, my bad. Wake. <laughs> Wake at dawn. I was waiting outside his cabin, as I have ever... Uh, as I have every day so far on this voyage. But this morning, he did not come. I could sense that he wouldn't. Does that mean he was already dead when suzato son arrived to his cabin? I knocked, but there was no reply. Then I started to become worried, so I went to find a member of the crew. Crewmen forced the cabin door open. Will we manage to get inside? Ah, oh, shit. One thing that strikes me as weird, right off the bat, was now that I know that Cosmo's the one who was dead, uh, what's his name, Herlock Shlomes, he said he wrote something in Russian? That doesn't make sense to me. Considering the fact that we barely knew English. There was Cosmo's sons clapped on the floor. And the white tape there now shows exactly where he was found, I supposed. I had no idea anything had happened. I must have been asleep in the wardrobe somehow. I wish it wasn't the case, but... That's just very hard to believe. This is all very hard to believe for me, too. Trust me. Now I told you everything that I know. So it's my turn to ask you a question. Yes. Alright. My head feels so heavy. I'm still throbbing like anything. Stowaway? Why are you even on board the ship, Naruhodo-san? You said something about being a stowaway, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I'm afraid that's true. It's two weeks since we left Japan now, and I've been shut up in this cabin the entire time. I had no idea. Look, how could you have occupied Cosmo-san's cabin for so long without him noticing? No. That would have been impossible, obviously. Yes, of course. Cosmo invited me. He wanted us to go to England together. He actually asked you? But why? I'm afraid I don't really know the reason myself. I don't understand. Cosmo, why do you want this? What's the real reason? Why go to such extreme lengths to smuggle me to England with you? It's an idea that's been on my mind ever since the end of that incredible trial. I love you, Ryanosuke. I love you, homie. I want to be with you forever. <laughs> I think I told you then, didn't I? That... That you bought... Oh, wow. That you ought to become a lawyer yourself. Well, yes, you did say that, but I didn't think you were serious. You have a talent for it. I can assure you of that. But I never really thought about becoming a lawyer. Well, that's something you can decide for yourself. London is at the spearhead of cultural development, the center of the world in many ways. There can't be any harm in seeing such an important place with your own eyes, can it? Well, no, definitely not. 
But on a personal level, if you were to become a lawyer, then... Then what? Nothing. Forget it. Cosmo, are you trying to get me to do something for you? Are you trying to... Is there someone you need you need lawyering with? Someone needs a lawyer. I gotta help out, but you can't do it because you're too close. You have a sister, Cosmo. Do I gotta be a lawyer to your sister? <laughs> Gonna hop off. Take care. Have a good day, evening, and or night. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, once I find a good uh, spot to stop, I'll probably... Yeah, I'll sign off too in a bit when I find a good spot to stop. But thanks for stopping by, though. I appreciate it. Hope to see you next stream. Like I said earlier, uh, tomorrow night or whatever. You know, Persona 4. Gonna be doing that. Gonna be starting that up. Cosmo's son is... He was always saying the same thing. That he wanted to change the Japanese legal system. Perhaps he thought that he could do that with you. Yes, maybe. But something's still bothering me a little. The look in his eyes... It was darker than I have ever seen it before. Um, Suzaru-san. I'm sorry that we kept it a secret from you. My stowaway on the ship, I mean. If I know Kazuma-sama, I expect that he was trying to protect me, to avoid me becoming guilty by association. <laughs> That's exactly right, yes. Word perfect, in fact. If you're not the culprit, then tell me. What happened last night here in this cabin? Well... The thing is, I don't really remember. Cosmo bought me something to eat, just like he always did. And then I got myself into that wardrobe over there, just like I always did. After that, I just fell asleep. Well, yeah. So deeply that you didn't even stir when Cosmo's son was killed? Well, yes. I have a different way of thinking about that. What if, now hear me out, he was sleeping in a position where his head was on the wall, right? I mean, it's pretty tiny in there. Um, what if during the struggle, while he was asleep, you know, he banged his head and went unconscious for a bit? I know it sounds unbelievable, really, I do. But it's the truth. If only I woke up, then perhaps I wouldn't be in this predicament. And for some reason, my head's still throbbing like anything. Really? Is something wrong? Oh, no, it's... Please, forget it. Suzano-san, you have to believe me, I didn't do it. I really don't want to doubt you. But the trouble is, there's no one else who could have possibly have done this. Cosma, I don't understand. Why? Why did this have to happen? I can't take this. Don't try to go anywhere. You're the perpetrator of this crime. You can't leave. I can't allow that to happen. I'm sorry. But Cosmo was killed right under my nose here. And I didn't do anything to stop it. And now I'm supposed to just sit around? My hands tied? While whoever did this walks free? No. I can't allow that to happen. Well? What do you propose to do then? I'm gonna investigate. I'm gonna find out exactly what happened. I'm gonna work out who took Cosmo's life, and how and why they did it. So I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to excuse me. Oh my god, did she just flip my ass over? <laughs> oh 
shit. What the? That was a Susato takedown. Oh <laughs> shit. A Susato what now? <laughs> what martial art form is that? I'm gonna need you to prove it. Sorry? Prove it? Yes. Your innocence. I need evidence. But... But how am I supposed to... Have you forgotten already? What you achieved just a few weeks ago? I haven't, but it seems that you have. You successfully defended yourself in a court of law. I see. She's expecting me to present some conclusive evidence. <laughs> I believe to get Susanna son I have to get Susanna son to believe me. I'll show her some evidence right now. That proves okay. Well, I mean that's the only thing I have. Here you go. Tell me, when I was discovered in the wardrobe before, was this piece of paper stuck over the door? Oh, yes, it was. I remember clearly. I thought so. Cosmo always put it in place whenever I went to sleep in there. Just in case the cabin stewardess or another crew member decided to look inside. So naturally, you did the same last night as well. Yes, of course. The gentleman who discovered you peeled the sign from the wardrobe door before he opened it. But if I were truly the culprit, I couldn't have climbed back inside the wardrobe and stuck this on the outside of the door myself. Yes, that's quite true. In other words, it's impossible that I killed Cosmo. Well, even if you are sprawled hopelessly on the floor, I don't know, I think I'm in a favorable position here. I like, I like the way I'm positioned. It has its certain benefits. <laughs> I can see why Cosmo-san thought so highly of you. Thank you, cesaro san Now, do you think perhaps you could help me out? Is that a dirty sock on the floor? What the hell is that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, in the light of the evidence, I don't see any reason why I should stop you from investigating in here, at least. Thank you. So you finally believe me. I'm sorry. No. What? I'm not sure yet. I can't rule out the possibility that you use some sort of conjuring trick to put the sign back in position. What does she think I am? A magician? For now, I suggest you investigate as thoroughly as possibly in here. I'll do the same. Alright. Let's get to work, Shizaru-san. Please don't misunderstand me. I still have my doubts. Oh, so we're not friends? <laughs> You're very different from Maya. <laughs> You're very different. <laughs> I miss Maya. I miss Maya and Pearl. Then my girls. I should be watching you to make sure you don't do anything that might disturb the crime scene. I wouldn't want you using your conjuring tricks to destroy evidence, for example. Yeah, right. Well, anyways, I should I should make a I should make a start on investigating here. Examine everything I can. Cosma, I swear, I will avenge your death. All right. Okay. <laughs> this is as good as any as a stopping point for now. All right. Oh my god, we have a lot of save slots, like way more than than before, I think. Did we have 20 before? I thought we had only had 10. During the, uh, you know, for our trials and tribulations and all that other shit. Which you can watch on my YouTube channel. Ha da 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 right? So here's a nice stopping point, but before I do that, because I'm very curious, I have- Oh, you're in the room too? Why didn't you try to- Why did she flip me and not you? I just have to look down here. Is that a fucking sock? What is that? Hmm. Oh yeah, you can interact with that too. It's a tipped over statue over there. Uh-huh. Anything behind here? 
There's a fucked up tablecloth over here. Mm. Spilled some spilled tea, right? Everything got spilled around in here. This probably came from there. All right. <laughs> All right. Let me stop investigating. I'm just, I'm just letting my mind go off. Uh, oh man. Now that, now that the stream come to an end, I'm not gonna be able to touch this game for a bit. Jesus. All right. Uh. <laughs> so, ending the stream. All right. Uh, for those who came and watched live, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Hope to see you guys again. All right. Uh, it definitely helps out when you guys watch live. And for those watching the VODs, I hope you're entertained by this. <laughs> hope you like it. Hope to see you guys live, too. Um, what else is there to say? So, tomorrow, right? Same, like, same time as always. Um, I'm gonna be starting the Persona 4 playthrough because... Because, uh... Because it's about to be the New Year's, and as I said before, I wanted to start playing this, playing Persona 4 Golden before the year is up, so definitely gonna do that. Uh, as of right now, um, like I said in the last stream, White Day is on the back burner because I have to do a whole complete playthrough just to like unlock the possibility to do the stuff that I want to do for that. And then Simulacrum and Ratchet. Um... I'll probably do them in like the same stream or something like that when I get a chance. Pro definitely after the new, year, the new year, of course, right? So sometime in January, we'll go back to those and finish them. As for uh, on the channel on YouTube right now, besides uploading um, previous streams, uh, like I said, finish the Arkham Origins 100% uh, playthrough. So if you want to check that, you can check that. Uh, played Cold Cold Heart DLC for that game as well. The whole DLC story with uh, Mr. Freeze and stuff like that. Played that for Christmas. And because, you know, it was Christmas Day, I dropped the first two parts of... Of, um... What's it called? Night Before Christmas, Oogie's Revenge. So that's on the YouTube channel if you want to watch that as well. And that's going to be it for me right now. Been streaming for, like, what three hours and almost 20 minutes so <laughs> definitely gonna take a bit of a break and you know come back later so that's it once again i want to say thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next video stay happy stay healthy and take care